the wider earth, David mm. Morton's work with Dead Puppet Society and QTC. Is that did that begin when you were still at QTC? I thought it might yeah, have been it, yeah. So when I was at what was then Queensland Theatre Company, we now mm. call it Queensland Theatre. Um, it was interesting. The, again, this commitment to how a local artist kind of building up careers and doing all that stuff. And so we had commissioned Wider Earth uh, before I, uh, before I came to this job, mm. but we'd also worked with them over a period of time. There were two projects before that. So this whole, whole idea of you don't ask someone to go from zero to hero. Mm. You go, okay, what are the steps in? And this was a, like a four year project of just kind of introducing them to the company, building up their uh, their ability to deal with resources, and then going, right, here's a big commission. And it was a big show mm, mm. in many ways. Um, what I loved about it is that uh, artists who have ambitions to work in different ways. So yes, they're dead puppet society, they work with puppets. But to say, actually, we want to work in the spoken word as well. How do we get more experience in that? Mm. Not just about you know object manipulation, but actually saying, how do we build um, uh, long format narratives? How do we engage emotionally with an audience? Uh, not just through um, abstraction, which is what they've done before, looking at objects and looking at abstract ideas, which I think the when you're creating work around uh, abstract ideas or non-narrative form, you can last about 50 to maybe 70 minutes mm. before mm. you start, an audience starts to rattle with the need for something that's taking us further. Mm. Um, and they were saying, yes, they'd hit this kind of, through a conversation, they said that they'd, they'd hit this world where they wanted to go further and say, here's a two act work and stuff. And that David Morton had written the work and this was not his first time writing, but of this particular scale. And so uh, they had come across, they'd done some work with um, Handspring in, in South, South Africa, Africa and um, who'd done all the um, puppetry work for uh, um, War Horse and mm. stuff. Mm. And they had come across a story of how the Beagle, the, the Charles Darwin's boat or the, the boat he was on, had come to South Africa at one point. And it also come through, uh, I think Tasmania and I think even Sydney. I can't remember the the yeah, there's somewhere connection. north as well. I can't remember. I can't either, remember yeah. the detail, but they'd come through and and they're going, oh, what's this little connection? And they got fascinated by the idea of it all, mm. and so they pitched this idea and were saying, oh, what scale do you want to make it, and where do you want to go? Uh, hence, it became, in the end, the wider earth. What I loved about the work was, it's it it naturally lent itself to objects mm. because you want to look at the Galapagos Islands through the eyes of someone who's seeing this fantastic tortoise or these incredible animals or the phosphorescent kind of ocean at one point that, that um, Charles Darwin wrote about. So it lent itself to this idea of the magical and, mm. and, and the mysterious. And, but then also this journey for a young man, because he was young, he was like 22 or something, I think at the time when he was on the, on the Beagle. This young man who in 1830, let's say, um, was also dealing with the abolition of slavery in, in England, was mm. looking at this tension between the church and science, the idea of faith and science, uh, that, that this young man who, was try, who will, uh, would eventually rewrite our belief and where we come from, yes. was, was dealing with this as a young man. Mm. We think of Charles Darwin as this old crusty scientist who wrote a book, mm. but in fact, he, as a young man, he was a radical who was even trying to deal with his own kind of emotional stability mm. and mm. throws himself into adventure along the way. So for me, it, as these young men, these young men who are making the work, they kind of represented, if you like, the same sense of adventure yeah, yeah, and yeah. science, yeah. this okay. idea of going, yeah. how do I mesh these things together? Yeah. So, you know, you give that, give that a go. And it's a fascinating kind of overarching thing there about, because Darwin has formed so deeply our, our mm. sense of self and, uh, and hu both humanity and biology. Mm. And, and, and then that's come into question so much in recent years. It's a really exciting idea for a piece. Well, and rewrites this idea of, of God. Yes, we, we now have intelligent design saying, yes, it's designed, it's designed, but God designed it. <laughs> yeah, fine, 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 whatever. I mean, like in the end, you get, a, you get to the point where, you know, um, who created the universe? Well, it came from the Big Bang, but who created the, the substance that the Big Bang came from? It does your mind in. At yeah. some point, you need a sense of faith or a leap of faith. I accept that. But this idea that we've seen, even in the last you know, few um, census data from in Australia, 
our belief in churches is just being eroded. Mm. Our mm. belief that there is a, a, a mediation of to the divine mm. through the church is slipping away and that our relationship to the environment is becoming more and more important. Yes. If you like, the, our, our relationship to the environment is our connection to the divine. Mm. You know, mm. I don't want to get too kind of animist about it or whatever, but mm. this notion of how if we connect to the world around us, we are more connected to each other and to the longevity of, of uh, humanity as well. Mm.